Now, um, probably kind of one of the coolest things that has come to Apex in a while, and this is something that I really, uh, you could kind of see where Apex was headed uh, before this region was created. Um, when you get to uh, kind of some cool, some new changes that were coming, uh, that kind of came to the interactive grid. Um, and actually in, in 1901, uh, when the, and also when the form region was created. Uh, and one of the things that the form region did that was kind of, you know, started this new trend. Uh, if you're not familiar, when you create a form region, um or uh you can you pick the region type form and then when you want to fetch data for a form or if you want to process data for a form you create processes and then you just pick the region that you want to process and and that process kind of just inherits all the configuration of that region right so it kind of was laying the foundation of hey we can create components that points to other components and kind of inherit how they're configured. And so it helps reduce the kind of duplication of effort when you're trying to make cohesive components that just work together. So I wanna be clear that a faceted region, it's a brand new region type and it works in conjunction with other regions. So you're going to make a classic report and then you're also going to create a faceted search region which points to the classic report. And so this is great because what will happen is it will automatically add um, facets, which at the end of the day, really they're just, they're, they function and, and behave just the same as items, but um, a facet is kind of controlled by the faceted search region. Um, so it's like an item, but it's not exactly an item. Uh, and basically, this allows us to uh, create these these uh, filters uh, that points to a classic report and filter and adjust the classic report without us having to write any JavaScript uh, whatsoever. Let me show you. Let me go ahead and leave this page. Oh, um, I, I will actually address this real quick for you. I'm going to stay on this page. Um, this is a this was uh, came about in Apex 5.1. This is a navigation option, and it drives me bonkers uh, when you go to leave a, a like a report page like this, and it prompts me to say, "Hey, you sure you want to leave this report page?" Well, yeah, of course I do. It's just a report page. I wasn't working on anything. Uh, and just a pro tip here: um, if I edit this page, there's a page level property under navigation. Uh, and it's called warn on unsaved changes. And I'm going to say, yeah, I don't need to warn the user on unsaved changes for this page. Save and run. And the funny thing about this, when I when I go to reload this page, it's going to prompt me one last time. And I'll say leave page. And now when I go to leave my single row view, it's not going to bark at me anymore. It should just let me go to the fasted search region. Oh, I didn't change anything either. But uh, anyway, if I had changed something. Okay. Um, Whoa, check this out. Here you can see I have this filter over on the left-hand side. Let me go ahead and clear it out. And you can see that my report updates on the right-hand side. Huh, that's kind of interesting. Um, what's going on here? Well, it turns out that I have a classic report region and uh, I also have a faceted search region. And the, this faceted search is pointing at this classic report. As I select different options here, you can see that my facets kind of update over here on the left-hand side. I can see if I want to add another filter uh, to say more than 3000, uh, now it kind of updates my facets and I can kind of come in here and clear out these different facets if I want. Um, I can, uh, the faceted search region has so many different customizations that you can inject into it or manipulate. Um, this is just kind of a very bare bones faceted search uh, region uh, here. How's this configured? Well, uh, you can see that I have my filter region here. And you can see that the type is faceted search. Okay. And notice that the source just points to a different region. That's it. I mean, there are some appearance and other, you know, other things that I can, I can change here, but 
um, its source is something else's source, and it just kind of inherits that source. So as I change my, my report, it's also going to have an impact uh, on my filtered region. There's nothing special about this. It's just literally getting data from EMP. That's it. And if I want to control different facets, you can see it's a lot just like items, but I just want to point out that it's a limited subset of all of the items that you would normally be able to pick. So in this example, I have a checkbox here, and um, I would like it to compute and show counts. I might not want it to do that. Uh, and I can control the maximum number of entities that are displayed um, at any given time. I've gone ahead and just left it at five. Notice that this facet is bound to a column. And this is the secret sauce. This lets it know which column it's going to be filtering. Where exactly, what the value that I pick, which column is it going to be bound to? And notice that I did the exact same thing for salary, but this time I picked a range. Uh, and down under source, you can see I bound it to the salary column, and I said that the salary column is a number. So you can see that we're kind of inheriting these properties uh, from, or I'm kind of leveraging an existing, my classic report query and just kind of amplifying it or kind of adding more or enriching. Um, the one thing that I will point out is that these static values for the ranges are kind of funny. Let me just show you. Uh, you can see that it has these little bars here. Um, and so this is kind of a, a funny way, but you have to have these bars because it's showing how it's bounded. So you can see less than a thousand, it's there's null to a thousand. You can say that it's a thousand to three thousand, or more than three thousand, I can say three thousand and then bounded by nothing. I probably need to adjust these numbers just a smidge, but um for the sake of kind of how this should be displayed. I like that. Uh the other thing to keep in mind when you're trying to make these ranges uh is there's an option here to say sort at runtime. Uh, and just be careful if you sort at runtime, it'll kind of reorganize what you have here. Um, and that might not be what you want. Okay. So I'm going to say sort at runtime. No, I already have this sorted the way that I want. Okay. So what's the advantage of the fasted search region? Well, it's a lot like the interactive report in that it kind of just creates the filters that you want, um, but it also gives you a little bit more control over how exactly those filters are going to be presented uh, to the user, right? Which is something, so it's kind of like the best of both worlds. It's kind of like you still have the freedom of the classic report, but you also can kind of like auto generate a lot of facets and just kind of make your life a lot easier. Fantastic. And I guess I also just want to point out that nowhere in my filtered, my report region, is there a where clause binding to these facets? The filtered region automatically adds these facets and makes sure that things are filtered appropriately. Fantastic. 